energy units and chemistry. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about energy first. And in short, energy is the ability to do work. And work itself is defined as a force operating over a distance. So here's work, and that's equal to our force over our distance, which is the change in x. Uh, the SI units for force are newtons, and that's represented with a capital N, while the distance has units of meters, the SI units. And so work is going to have units of newtons times meters. So newtons times meters. Now, we're going to re uh, redefine this quantity as something called a joule. And that's going to be our new unit of energy for this chapter. So a joule is one newton times meter, and we can write that in short version, basically, one capital J, so that's a joule, is equal to one newton times meter. Now, energy is the ability to do work, and energy is also measured in joules. And we're going to use joules as our primary unit of energy. And another thing that we're going to see a lot is something called a kilojoule. And if we think back to our SI prefixes, then we remember a, a kilo anything is a thousand of it. So a kilojoule is a thousand joules. Now, we still see another unit of energy called the calorie. And if we write the definition of calories in terms of joules, we're going to have one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. Now, calorie is still used commonly in nutrition. And so we can see here on this label that uh, calories are 230. And notice that it's a capital C. So there is something special about that. And basically, a calorie is 4.1 four joules, but um, the calorie on the label is actually kilocalories, so that's actually a thousand small c calories. Okay, so let's just do a quick little example of converting calories to joules. So a serving of a food has 38 calories. Notice it's capital C, okay, not small c. So how many joules is this? So go ahead and try that, and then we'll go over the answer. Okay, so the first thing we want to realize is that we have a capital C, so that means we're talking about kilocalories as opposed to just small c calories. So when we determine our answer, the first thing we want to do is convert from kilocalories to calories. So we're going to go from a big thing, kilocalories, to a little thing. So we're going to end up with a lot of those little things, small c calories. And then we're going to convert from small c calories to joules since we have the conversion for that quantity. Okay, so 38 kcals, so that's what we're starting, that was, that's what was on the label. The first thing we're going to do is convert kcals to calories, okay? So here's our conversion, 1,000 small c calories is equal to one big c calorie or kilocalorie as it shows here, okay? We're going to cancel out kcals because we have the conversion and we're going to take 38 and multiply it by 1,000. But we're not done because we still need to go from calories to joules. So our next conversion factor here is going to be one calorie. And notice we put that on the bottom because we have to cancel out calories on the top in the previous bracket. And then we're going to put 4.184 joules on the top. So one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. One kilocalorie is equal to 1,000 calories. And notice that whatever you want to cancel out is what's on the bottom in each one of these conversion factors. So when we multiply 38 times 1,000 times 4.184, we're going to get 160,000 joules. Okay, so the next big concept is conservation of energy. And whenever we study energy, we're going to have a system. And basically, that's just the part of the universe under study. So that can be a beaker, a flask, or a container whose contents are being observed and measured. It can be a fishbowl, okay, with a fish in it. Now, an isolated system is a special system, and that system does not allow a transfer of energy or matter into or out of the system. And so a good approximation of an isolated system is a closed, insulated, 
thermos type bottle or a Yeti mug as long as it's closed. And one of the fundamental ideas about the total energy of this isolated system is that it doesn't increase or decrease. And so when that happens, then we say that that quantity is conserved. And so that brings us to the law of conservation of energy. And that basically just says that the total energy of an isolated system does not change. Now this concept is actually a scientific law. So it's one of our highest understandings of, of the natural universe, the law of conservation of energy.